So hello. Um, I, today uh, I want. Please be quiet. Children, quiet. <laughs> so today I want to talk about the Alp toolchain tool chain, uh, status. At least that was my idea when preparing the talk. When preparing, I realized that there's nothing really set in stone for Alp already. So it was basically uh, in the process of being most moved from the uh, open build service to the internal build service. And so the set of the sort of state I'm talking about is from about a week ago. So it may have, or everything have, may have been changed uh, today. Uh, so, and let me see how. <laughs> done, done, uh, right, empty, what's the status? So uh, what's, what, what's the tool chain? So the tool chain, for, for me, I'm, I'm a tool chain engineer in the tool chain team. We are mostly working on GCC and uh, Binutils and also glibc and the debugger and stuff like that. But of course, the tool chain also includes uh, languages that are not provided by GCC, like Rust or Java and also includes things of the build system, like uh, the make system of the different variants you have, uh, the assemblers and linkers we already covered, but some of the tool chains have their own. Uh, then, of course, a very important part of the tool chain is actually the runtime libraries, right? So if you build something and you then run it, it usually relies on some runtime libraries. And part of the runtime library uh, in Linux is, for example, the C library, which is there for, is, is used by almost all of the, the languages, but there are language specific runtimes like the C++ runtime uh, of uh, GCC, or for example, the Fortran runtime library if when you are actually building and running a Fortran program. And then there's of course, to some extent, also all the interpreted languages, like if you have Python or Java bytecode, or uh, other scripting languages, uh, and sometimes also just-in-time compilers on the end that's it. And the toolchain, at least for the developer side, also includes things like debuggers and editors or IDEs, if we have something like that. So this is basically what the toolchain covers, and our team covers a very tiny bit of that. But we actually have pieces of all of this in our older products like Sleep 15. And so, no, what's the state on Alp with all this? Uh, so one of the motivation uh, is that we want to really know what, what we are using to, what we are uh, using to build our product because what we are using there, we have to at least support internally, hopefully if it breaks at some point. Uh, and then we also want to know what, what part of that tool chain we actually ship to the customer. So with, with Sleep 15, there was at some point the, the BSK, okay, the, the build bootstrap whatever kit. Basically, here you have everything and you can rebuild everything. So we have to ship everything to the customer. Um, but, but it's also that uh, we are working like feature centric. We are wanting to get the feature done and ship the feature. And if by accident some part of the tool chain also gets shipped, well, the feature doesn't care, but eventually you will care because you will have to support the tool chain that leaked to the customer and that customer thought, well, I got it, so it's supported, right? So we want to know what, what do we actually support for a customer. So with SLE 15, we had uh, this module thing so it was the, the base module, base system module, or how it was exactly called. Um, and most of the tool chain things I listed were actually on the base um, module, in the base system module. And there were additional bits on the development module. So where exactly the boundary lies was probably kind of a dice roll by some release manager or product manager. It's like if, if the make, the GNU make, was on a base image uh, in, in the base system module or in the development module. It's probably, well, it happened in some way, right? Um, and then there are also the runtime components. For example, 
we, with uh, the GCC compiler, we ship up-to-date versions every year into the development module, but the core runtime libraries are actually shipped in the base system module as updates because uh, we have a, a stable ABI. So basically, we update the C++ runtime via a regular package update for the base product because, of course, the C++ runtime is pretty core to our product. We can't only ship it in the development module. Right? So it's usually it's, it's split between the runtime components and the actual compiler or thing, right? For the interpreted languages, of course, you have to have the whole thing where you actually want to run the scripts, right? It's, there's even more of a thing. So we, we don't want to have Python only on the development module because that, yeah, well, you, you also need the whole Python thing to, to run the Python code. Uh, and then for SLE 15, there's uh, lifecycle data for, I, I don't think actually on a module level, but on a, on a slightly more fine-grained level, but so I don't know exactly, but it's, it's definitely separate for the base product and for the development module. That puts different constraints on supportability on, for example, the, the C++ runtime and the actual compiler that might have been used to build an application. Even if that's maybe not spelled out explicitly somewhere. And uh, then there was package hub, for which I, I a long time thought that was just unsupported stuff, but it's actually supported. So everything that's on package hub is actually supported. It's just not L3 supported. But we have to deliver like security fixes and bug fixes. At least I was told that. Ah, it's maintained and not supported. Ah, okay, yeah, that's the, the crucial difference. <laughs> it's maintained, so it's it's not the waste, it's the the bin, the the trash can. But you're supposed to work on it if it ends up in package hub. Uh, so for Alp on the the customer side, so far in in the open build service, there were two products defined. There was a, a micro product and bedrock, which now is called server. Um, and both of those didn't contain any toolchain pieces in the open build service variant. Meanwhile, the server variant moved to internal build service, but I wasn't able to check on yesterday, it was even there only yesterday, whether it now contains any toolchain pieces. For example, if the server product has a compiler to build kernel modules or not. So it, it didn't have one in, in, in the variant, it was in the open build service. Right? Yeah, probably. Uh, but there are, of course, core runtime libraries present, like glibc and also the C++ runtime, because we do have binaries that require them, right? And there's also a Python interpreter, because we have Python scripts, right? And there's Perl, I, right, and uh, whatever. Um, so, and uh, what was also there on the open build service side were a set of uh, workloads, which means in these days containers, uh, which were mostly server-centric, like I think some Apache stuff. So there's nothing toolchain related there. So there's no kind of a, a container with a compiler in, or inside or a container with OpenJDK or however that's going to work. So uh, as far as I see, um, when we ship micro or server, there is no way to compile something on the product, but there's still the package pool with all the RPMs, and as far as I understand, it will contain basically everything that's now in the Alp source stable 1.0, which is also changing from day to day. Uh, so customers can Kind of with with the uh, with the transactional install install packages into their system, and can have a compiler that way, and that's possibly also supported. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, well, yeah. If it's there, it's it's supported. That's the idea of the customer, of course, right? Um, so the, the the user experience is is kind of unclear, especially so the the typical thing you want possibly want to do on the server which is also was on the, the other side uh, the, in, the, in the partner talk, 
was to install a, a, um, a kernel module we don't ship ourselves that usually involves compiling something, right? So you need at least a compiler for that. And Dirk said there was a bug report for that. Yeah, the was from the partner actually. Ah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's an open question. Um, so, and then uh, as part of the motivation I listed, we, we want to know what we are actually using to build the product. Um, yeah, so, and, and for Alp, the, the, the story is of course the same as for SLE 15. So currently there's, in the internal build service, there's a project that builds all of the source packages. And, and I've just um, gone and uh, asked the API for the build info and seen what we're actually using for building it. Um, and did some statistics there. Um, because as history tells us, you, um, things pile up over the lifetime of the product. So we sleep 15 is already there like for, for five years. And we have multiple versions of uh, GCC used for building different versions of Firefox or LibreOffice, or we have different Clang versions that are used to build stuff. So the, the things tend to pile up. Um, so I, I've, I've looked and uh, I found GCC, I found Golang, I found Rust, OpenGDK, and LVM. I found two Python versions, to my surprise, but obviously they are too different to be interchangeably used for some reason. Are you surprised that there were only two? Or I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I was surprised there were two Python versions. And, and uh, Python 2.3 wasn't uh, among them. <laughs> And, and there's, I also found Ruby, and I found three uh, makes. Pro probably makes sense, apart from maybe CMake. The, the Ninja is, I think, for Java? Or and, and is for Java? I don't know. And it's Java, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's for everything. So, so I was um, surprised to have that, that we have multiple things for everything, right? Because we have GNU make. <coughs> Misa? Oh, Mason, right. Okay. So um, then I asked the build info and did some statistics on a snapshot my 10th. Uh, so I found uh, 1,679 build descriptions. So that means kind of in the old days it was spec files, but now it's uh, actually, m if there are multiple um, spec files in a single source package, then it's now used using the multi-build thing. So we have only 1,679 build descriptions in the source standard. <clears throat> and there are uh, 1,415 source packages. 244 of those are leaf, so they are not used for building other packages. That's actually quite few, right? Uh, used for building means that they are not installed into any of the built uh, images that are used at uh, package build time. <coughs> uh, so there are uh, quite a few that are only used very few times. And, but I was also surprised in the source standard there's no Firefox, there's no LibreOffice, there's no GNOME, but there's X11 and Wayland. So it seems to be incomplete or some of the workloads will come from different source, standard, non-standard, or it, maybe they are fast and not standard in the end. But, but it, it doesn't exist yet, so it's, it's all work in progress. This, I, I only realized this when preparing the talk, so that's maybe not 100% useful because it's not final yet, but it's, it's the point where we can still change things, right? So, so on, on, on SLE 15, the server also had Firefox yeah. because the admins wanted Firefox, right? But the app is different, so yeah, yeah, so it's different. Um, okay. That build project we were using, um, it's really cool to use it. But it's there kind of as a, a bit of a sort of build, a build test environment. You know, the, pro the, the products in SUSE, our products in, in IBS and soon to be OES again. Um, those will be building those sources in that context. So some of this using one, using twice, some of this multiple Python versions, you know, no, I expect 
Yeah. But in, in that sort of standard build, no product is going to use those packages. That's just there so we have. I, I know, I know. I, I, I had to, I had to, as I'm using the API, I had yeah. to use the product that actually builds something and the server things don't build anything yeah. right now. It's yeah. So, and, but, but uh, I, I, will, I will come back to this problem you just mentioned. Yeah, cool. Even if you didn't identify it yet. <laughs> 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 okay, so, um, so in, in, in some way I was surprised that the, I, was, I was lucky, oh, we only have this few packages, but then I realized it can't be the complete list in the end if we also want to ship all the workloads, right? There's probably also no, no Apache in, inside the, 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 the set. I didn't check. And, and, and as, as for the installer, it should be a workload, in my opinion. It shouldn't influence what we have in the, in the, in the core server. It's yeah, yeah, it's a product. OK. So I, I have uh, some more statistics on, on the, the actual uh, compiled languages that are used. So we have uh, quite a few source packages that use C++ and GCC as a compiler. I can't get you numbers on C because GCC is always installed. It's, it's uh, one of the pre-installed packages. So no, no package has a build requires on a C compiler because it's already there. Um, we, we only have one package that uses Go in, in this source standard. It's pprof, whatever that's supposed to be. Uh, I, I, Right, so, uh, but, but of course we have uh, three other Go versions to actually build the Golang compiler. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and the oldest one is built by GCC Go, yeah. And then we have three packages that use Rust. Somehow, some of the Misa drivers, uh, Dracut and this other thing. And I, I would have expected Firefox. This is where I noticed, oh, ooh, there's no Firefox. Um, we, we do have seven packages that use part of the LVM toolchain, but it's not really, they are not, I think they are not using the LVM C or C++ compiler, but they are using the libLVM, so the, 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 the core IR parts, which is probably, is it, so, so these, these are all packages that are in this set of source packages, yeah. Okay, don't, don't ask. <laughs> Right, uh, or uh, Spear uh, V LVM transfer. It's, it's, I think that's, that's some kind of uh, interpreted languages, uh, Spire V, whatever. Yeah, but, but, but there's also PostgreSQL in, in, but that should also be a workload, so I'm not sure. No, no, uh, this, is, this is source standard 1.0 build. So the, the building of the source standard. Uh, as of uh, May 10th, <clears throat> as of it's it's about a week old. As I said, so the, I tried to update, but the, the 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 build project was in kind of broken state more often than I liked, and then the build info also doesn't produce anything useful. So I had to pick a date where nearly everything was green, only a few unresolved, and then I took a snapshot of the data. Right, uh, we have quite a few packages that use Java, so we have the Open JDK. Um, in all of these numbers, I try to exclude obvious parts of the toolchain itself. Right, so so for uh, I didn't count Cargo uh, as user of Rust because well, yeah, it's there because of Rust, for example. And and Seven seem to use part of the BPF toolchain, which where I understand it's currently provided by LLVM in some way. So, so what, what actually surprised me is that for uh, the, the things that we have very few packages that we, that we bother to support the, the whole toolchain stack for that language just because of pprof, for example. Why do we support Go at all if we just use it for pprof, for example, just as a random example? It's, it's, and uh, and uh, I don't know who actually in the company is supporting Golang internally if something breaks, I guess nobody. Now we have, now we have a package maintainer. Yeah, but, but package maintainer is something different if uh, compared to something that breaks in your compiler. I know the, the answer for Golang is you will update to version 1.3 whatever, because they probably also don't support releases that are older than three months. It's like LVM. And, and yeah, but but Alp is going to live for 
many years, right? So it's, it's, it's a question that's in the, well, we have one package, at least in this set of packages, that requires the language. Is it important or not? Is there an alternative that's maybe written in some other language? Right? Um, so uh, on the interpreted language, we have the two Python stacks, which well, I was surprised, but we actually have uh, quite a number of uses that also counts the, the Python packages that, of course, require the Python. I'm not sure whether, whether we, we actually have many real users that are then leaf that are using the, the specific Python stacks or not, but we probably at least have one for each of them. But so I'm, I, I, as, as I said, I'm, I don't know why we have, why we even consider shipping two stacks with Alp. And, and we also have Ruby with nine users. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, Yast was, uh, was using Ruby, but there's no traces of Yast in, in source standard. Then we have CMake used by um, quite many packages. Uh, again, I couldn't uh, get numbers for GNU make because that's also pre-installed into the system. Uh, we use Ninja a lot of times and AND is also used quite often. It's probably upstream decisions, the, the, the make tooling they use and the package maintainers probably have better things to do than to exchange the core make tool that's used for the thing. So that's quite, a, it's understandable, it's unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, so now we get to the, to the questions part, to the question that I have. Um, so how, how do we plan to deliver a C or C++ development environment to the customer? Um, so we, we, on Wisley 15, we had this development module. So basically, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You, you will find your pages, install it, and, and use it. Um, I understand that for ARP, uh, there's also these set of, here's the set of packages. It's the, the pool, the package pool. But in, in, the, in the new ARP world, it should be kind of uh, a workload in some way. I'm not sure if it's, it's then supposed to be a development workstation workload complete with a GNOME desktop or whatever. Or So I, I, I tried to get some answers from Olaf Kirch, who's supposed to think about this, but I think don't think he's in this room, and I also didn't see him yet. The answer here is we don't know yet. Yeah, that's... that's. Uh, ex yeah, yeah. Excuse me, can you... Well, there can you is a the micro? question from YouTube to use the microphone so the people on the stream can hear the talk on the audience as well. Thank you. Yeah, so I have an idea. Really, you know, if you look at what we've got on Alp right now, and kind of the general direction of travel, where th like things like a GNOME desktop, I don't really expect to be there. So I don't think it makes sense to think of Alp as, you know, that's the OS which a developer for Alp is actually going to use to develop for Alp. You know, so it's not like Slee, where the best platform for developing Slee is Slee. Everything in Alpha is meant to be a workload. Those workloads are meant to be containers. I think the natural choice is really, therefore, there should be one or multiple development containers. Um, and, you know, that in some, in, in cases like this, that might be, you know, a container containing glibc and, and, you know, the C compiler and everything you need there. Maybe a different one for Java, maybe a different one for this other language, et cetera, et cetera. In some of those cases of interpreted stuff, that will also be the container you use as the base for your derivative workload, because that's how this stuff works with Python, right? You have a Python base container, and then you put your, your Python application you know, inside your one there. Um, so, you know, it's still a little bit of an open question, but really in kind of direction, that's, that's the natural choice. And you know those containers have to be available on Tumbleweed and Leap and Slee and everything we currently have. So that's the platform a developer would actually use to then download the container, run it, build it, compile it, done. Okay. So and and so that the same answer is probably also for how when I as a developer develop a C plus plus application, I compile it and I want to deploy it somewhere. I build a container yeah. with the runtime I just used for compiling it, for example. Yeah. Well, so it's of course the, the, the natural thing. So now, uh, now we, we get back, back to that, uh, the, the products are supposed to build the packages, right? So we have 
either all of source standard built for the server product and for the micro product, or maybe just a subset. And as far as I understand, it's supposed to be that they might be built slightly different. Yep. At least that's the idea. So there are going to be multiple package pools, probably one for each product. So are there all of the source standard packages, all of the packages we ship into any product, are they available for all products? Like, will the micro product have in its, its package pool a compiler? You don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> you think no? Okay. So, so, so we are actually going to like support ten flavors of GCC for each of the servers because they might be built differently. Yeah. So, so, so uh, yeah. So that, that, that's that's one of the one of the more scary parts that that you really thought building the packages multiple times for each product and even slightly different, because it, it makes the the QA matrix explode. It makes everything explode, and 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 so so maybe a, a, a better strategy would be to build most of these things just once. And if you need to build something specialized, then only build that inside the server product. <coughs> because there should be a good reason to do that. So one of the reasons why the ALP structure in OBS is the way it is, you know, with this source standard and then the products, is so we can have a project config for the source standard, so that, you know, a generic OBS project config that applies for everything. And then, you know, there's going to be times where product A and product B, you know, needs to have a different project config. So, I is you know, is, if we're going to have ten different versions of GCC for ten different products, no, that would be effing stupid. Do we want to have the ability of having a different GCC for that one different product? Yes. And so Alp is designed to enable us for that. So you have you know you end up with this complicated project config. You end up, you know pro project layout in OBS and the ability to have the different project config. We're not going to have you know for some of this talking stuff. Yeah, we're going to want to use the same thing all over. You know, all over the place as much as we can. That that's common sense. But some specialized product for some specialized customer who might be throwing millions our way. You know, we if if they want that different GCC, we want to be able to say yes now. And that's okay. why yeah. why you see that there. So that's that's where I think you know I don't think you have to worry about this massive proliferation. But yeah, we are going to have some products. Well, we, we do that. yeah we, we we do like in. We do have the existing issues of like syncing build counters between 32-bit and whatever. If, if you're building now th things three or four times and you have dependencies, then you have to sync build counters, or you only have to actually build it once and only build select packages in each of the products. But the setup isn't that way right now, right? And I'm not sure if it's going there because I I, I get conflicting opinions, of course, when I when I was looking for this. So, um, I was actually also um, looking at how we deal with GCC itself. <clears throat> so for, for SLE 15, as I uh, said previously, we are actually shipping updated toolchains about uh, once a year. When, when there's a new GCC release, we ship it to the development uh, module, and they are packages that have a, a, a different number at the end, so it's GCC 7 or GCC 11. Um, and the binaries are actually also suffixed with the version, uh, right? So when, when a customer installs GCC 11 from the development module and wants to use it, he cannot just type GCC because that's the, our holy grail system compiler. It's GCC 7 for C15. But he has, he has actually to specify the, the suffixed binary names, uh, right? Uh, and the runtime libraries, as I said previously, we have, for example, a stable ABI for the C++ runtime. That means the newest compiler provides the runtime for the SLE based system. <clears throat> and due to internal technical issues, um, we can only have one binary package with the same name built 
built once. So only one source package may pro uh, may produce the, a binary package with the same name, unless you are in a different service pack. But that is again dependent on the actual layout or in in the build service. Uh, so we we are changing the shared libraries we built um, and suffix that as well for the older compiler. So if they in any case need an update then they will build uh, suffix versions and the newest versions builds the version without the suffix, right? So that's how we do it uh, in SLEE 15. So for ALP, uh, we share the same thing, right? Because it's, it's also in Tumbleweed and there were no like fate feature requests or any plans thought out how to, how to do that with the idea of providing uh, kind of a workload with, with a, like, newer C++ compiler. Uh, so we still have these symlinks. So there's a GCC package that just has symlinks to the, the Holy Grail system compiler. So we still have that. And uh, the binaries of the actual GCC package are all suffixed. So one, one could think that we can get rid of these suffixes when we just provide different containers for the GCC 14 and 15. <clears throat> and uh, you can actually create all the symlinks in the container setup config. I've, uh, in the last hack week, I produced containers for GCC just for fun to see if you can use them. It's kind of weird, but <laughs> uh, it kind of works. So, so I've done that. That works. But, but we still have the, this issue that we are probably supposed to have uh, the same Holy Grail system compiler for the next 20 years for Alp. And because in the past people were scared to change the compiler that's used for building kernel modules um, and also for updates and uh, whatever. So that's it's so we are going to have multiple GCC packages as we had in the past. Um, so they are possibly then with Alp going to live in workload projects where I put, for example, GCC 14. But what do we actually do with the system runtime? Like when, when do, we ex do we keep that at the, the, the Holy Grail system compiler level? Be because each workload is supposed to come with the container and with the runtime from the compiler that's, that was, uh, was used, or not. So how, how do we deal, for example, with, uh, I, I mean, with Firefox is easy. Firefox is going to be delivered inside a container. So I, I'll try to give that an answer. Um, there is a, in the PLD, there's a requirement on a core system for IHV enablement and for a kernel enablement. And that one is fixed over the whole life cycle. So uh, the answer I see. is yes, mostly. Yes. The answer is yes, but. Um, yes, but. <laughs> no, because that's in the PRD and that that is a fair assumption to take. However, you know, again, one of the reasons the Alp project, you know, the, pla it's the reason it's a platform, not a product, the reason we're not look talking about it as, you know, like Slee and everything's got the same version number, you know, as a platform, it's going to produce multiple different distributions. You know, micro and server are just the first ones. Are you, you know, the possibility could be that some Alp product in the future might have a different holy grail GCC version than the other out products that are out at the same time. You know, so we want the ability to be able to do that. Are we going to? Probably not. But you know, the, the, so actually, the way this is currently done is perfectly fine and flexible for that because we can we can do it the old-fashioned way, and then if we have one product where mm. we want to jump to GCC 14 or something, then that just has a different sim link in it, and away we go. So I don't see a problem with copying what we're currently doing there. Okay, so so when when uh, one of one of the nice things uh, with the Sleep 15 way was that, uh, for example, the, the the C++ standard library came from the news compiler, so it automatically got all the fixes. You, every customer got the new new version and got the fixes. So with with the idea, if it's it's a holy grail runtime, we either don't care because nobody uses it. They're always, always having the C++ runtime in their containers, right? And get it from somewhere, um, or we have to basically patch the the whole system 
compiler as well. And with the, with the old system, we had basically an infinite support time for the C++ runtime, for the inf de facto newest C++ runtime. Uh, with the new idea, and, and we had the, the develop module compiler was basically supported for one and a half years, right? Um, and with the new idea, we, we, we have to decide how to handle the, the runtime of this GCC 14 in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the container. Because if you only support the compiler for one and a half years, no ISV is going to use that because the runtime is going to be only supported for one and a half years. That's probably, yeah. So how, how do we handle kind of these split life cycle things where we actually don't want 10 different C++ runtime variants supported, but just the newest one. So we want to have them all replace it with the one from the newest compiler. That's what we ideally want from the support perspective, but, but that doesn't really match with the idea of separating the tool chains and everything will just be basically rendered from the, the tool chain you are using uh, when, when compiling an application and when you're an ISV. So how do we support the ISVs in, in that way? Or, or basically the customers that run the ISV workloads mm -hmm. in the end? So, uh, I, so actually I think I will piggyback on that because I'm looking at how the developer experience is going to look like, not from our side, but actually on the side of the company that wants to either develop or deploy things with ALP. So we are basically focusing on having things with workloads, but my first question is, my first question is what happens if a company X doesn't want to run a container workload? Are we going to allow them to use what version of GCC on the whole system? Or if they, if they, if they are using Python to deploy whatever they are doing, because people do crazy things. And this is something that we cannot control. How is that going to look like? So this, this on one end, because I'm looking at, uh, on, on the other side, how the QA matrix is, is going to look like, not just for the workloads, because at some point somebody has to check that the maintenance uh, life cycle of all those 100 or millions of workload type, we are going to end up at some point including the different products they have to go somewhere so that uh, some, somebody needs to touch it before they are shipped to, to, to customers. And if we're talking about shipping whichever compiler somebody wants inside a container workload, that's one thing, but then what happens on the whole system? How is that developer experience going to look like? It's a, yeah, you, you can probably yeah, so give I mean, two cents in, in or the, more. Yeah, in the context, yeah, no worries. In the context of, of output, yeah, no, in the context of, of Alp Micro and Alp Server, you know, they're container host OSs. So we will support container workloads on those. It's not sleep. You know, if customer wants to install something on a base OS, we've got a nice sleep product, give them that. So, you know, there's no answer for that because that's not a supported use case. You know, kernel modules, if it's an exception, we'll need to make a container for that. But yeah, you know, use a container to make your kernel module and away you go. Yeah, but right now, so right now the issue is that uh, for Alp server, uh, as far as my understanding goes, you have certain workloads that are also RPM based. No, nope, they're containers. There may be containers that get there by RPMs, but they're containers. So, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so we getting getting back to your original comment that probably Alp server is not going to the, to be the best OS to develop uh, workloads for Alp server on, right? So, uh, what's the story? I, I mean, I, I could imagine one could use Sli fifteen uh, desktop to develop Alp workloads, right? There's no issue with that. I guess we have all the container building pieces also available on Sli 15. Uh, one, one, one could also, well, OpenSUSE is not supported, so probably the ISV is not 
wanting to use that, but they could use RHEL workstation or Ubuntu if they have any support to build a support thing. So is, is that the story we are delivering? Just use our old pro which isn't old, it's not an old product, right? It's no no no. I, I didn't want to say that. It's it's a it's a it's a stable, a striving and yeah, evolving. So but but is there an idea for the future? Is is I mean is, is, is Lee fifteen is eventually going away in, uh, in twenty years. Even if Windows with WSL, you can use the Mac to build it. Yeah, but is, is that is that our answers to the ISVs? I mean that's that's my question. So uh, to, yeah, fo sure. to, to follow up there. So let's say that I sit down and I develop everything on my Windows machine and life is beautiful, everything is working. Now I need to build that and deploy it. Where do I build it? You go to your Windows machine. Or you have a CI with the correct so the, 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 stuff the, the, installed. I'm, I'm thinking on, on the CI and basically uh, if I understand what Richard is saying, deploying a simple binary on a ALP server is simply not going to be supported. It has to be a container workload. That's the simple because because you are lacking all the runtime. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm just I'm just trying to to yeah. uh, push where I think we are going to end up, which is allowing customers to run basically yeah. containers, so, yeah. uh, non-container workloads as a, on the whole system. So, uh, so uh, uh, the answer from, from Hirschi on, on the Alp whatever call was, well, yes, they're going to be the package pool and you, you can transactional install <laughs> all of those packages and then you're going to be happy. Exactly. But, but that's not, is suppo is not support, not supported, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's supposed to be a, a pool of all packages in addition to the containers. Richard. <laughs> Off the record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I, I'm... Oh, I, I have more. I, 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 I have one more slide, but, but I, I talked about this, uh, right? So this, this was my uh, last, last slide. So and, and as I intended, we, had, we have many questions. We have some kind of answers. And uh, Alp, Alp, is, Alp is still in development. So if you have unanswered questions, there are people that are supposed to answer them. Uh, not, not me, but... Uh, <laughs> Right, and I guess it's it's still time to approach them. Also, if you have ideas, um, yeah, and I hope we we get something on top of Alp that's a good thing to develop for Alp, and uh -huh. not only tumbleweed or not not only Sleep Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, <laughs> just because this is now segueing to the other thing that I'm working. So yeah, not just tumbleweed, not just you know, you know, you know. There's a gap there. We know there's a gap there, and in OpenSUSE we we see that because like you know, OpenSUSE is going to be getting everything in IBS, and we're putting it in a but it's a server. Like yeah. you know, there's there's definitely a need there to maybe build something else, um, not leap because it's not going to be leap. It's going to be something else, right? So um, that's what I've been putting in factory is that call for volunteers, you know, that call for volunteers is still open, that team is starting to come together, meetings will probably start week after OSC, you know, join in, it's, it, the, it's an open forum, you know, there's a ton of open questions and I'm not answering all of them, you know, we can, and in OpenSUSE in particular, we can totally shape that to be something that makes sense for the OpenSUSE user base, for, you know, for the developer there, the developer that wants to use this thing, so we can come up with the, the perfect right option there, and then Sousa can follow that afterwards, hopefully. So, yeah, that might be the best way forward for a lot of this stuff. Okay. Shameless plug. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? Somebody, if you wants to share, I, I probably don't have answers, but uh, yeah. Uh, why are we insisting on building uh, the kernel, the default compiler? Uh, because, okay, the kernel usually doesn't. Work with the lightest compiler because there is 
that's a lot of code, and uh, usually there are some incompatibilities that take some time to fix. But if we are sticking uh, to the same compiler for 10, 15 years, we eventually run into issues that are on the compiler side, that, that something doesn't work, and uh, the answer is, okay, it's not critical to fix in our kernel, uh, and it, it would be much worse, so it won't be done. Yeah, it, you're also relying on features that are only provided by newer compilers from time to time, and we either try to backport stuff to the old compilers, like for the security hardening stuff, like that, and so it's 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 a liability to keep with the very old compiler for the kernel. But I can very much understand that you don't want to jump onto the newest compiler all the time. But I mean, well, we are also not updating the kernel in every service pack in C15. So it's updated in every other service pack. Yeah. So we are updating the compiler every year. But of course not the holy system whatever thing, right? There's also for the kernel, you will probably get into Rust at some point, right? So, so GCC will eventually get a, a usable Rust front end, probably trailing behind uh, the official Rust C, of course, and it's not going to be GC13, which is the holy system compiler for the next 20 years file. But that's your decision, it's, it's not my, it's, it's, it's the PR, PRD whatever decision that writes down that has to exist, the, the very old thing. <laughs> the, he's hiding, uh, <laughs> Stefan is hiding. <laughs> Well, the, the reason for the existence or reliance of the very old compiler is untouched for years, basically, is, is not compiling kernel modules. It's releasing package updates. You need to recompile old packages. Yeah, sure. Eventually, after 10 years, yeah. suddenly there's a security bug in bash, and, and you need to compile that very old bash. Yeah. And that's not going to work with the new compiler. Uh, and it contains unknown bugs. You know that the old bash compiled with the old compilers seem to have yeah. worked for 10 yeah. years, except for that security bug. Uh, you don't know if the result compiled by the new compiler after all fi fixing all the warnings and new errors uh, is actually working still. Uh, so using the old compiler is, is, is actually uh, for, for, for for, for some for, kind for getting yourself some, yeah. some security. Um, for for uh, some kind of updates, that's true. Of course, yeah. we are also doing like version updates, major version yeah. updates for other software yeah. that's upstream tested with new compilers, with and new we compilers build it with a very, very old compiler, yeah, yeah, and you will run into bugs. It's the same problem. The other way, in, in the world. World. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. Uh, it's sometimes good, sometimes bad, uh, and and of course the obvious the obvious answer is oh well we have to support all of the compilers. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, we, we built, we built, uh, uh, built for each package we built, built the course, save the, 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 the image we, are, we used for building, save it away, and if there's a bug in the package, just use that exact image for uh, building the update. So I was actually, I asked a question about the holy grail system compiler for Alt at the meeting we had in Prague, and I got a different answer than today, because basically that they, uh, I forgot who told me, but but they told me that the plan is that every serve something the um, the equivalent of a service pack would be recompiled. All of it would be recompiled, so we could bump the compiler, catch the bugs hopefully there at the time when we are not yeah. like fixing a security bug. So we are we, we we don't get surprised with compiler updates when recompiling packages for random reasons at random times. But actually, with Alp or every I don't know what a service pack would be called. But if it would be sorry, so yes, yeah, so, so all the sync points would be everything would be recompiled. Uh, I see. So it's yeah, yeah SP, so we can, <laughs> yeah. we can use the <laughs> so every every SP would be recompiled. So so at least a couple of weeks ago, the answer was well, we may decide to swap the system compiler every three four years. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the, today I learned that the, the requirement was to keep it the same for. Or well, maybe they may, maybe 
yeah, maybe the requirement is only that we have also the own compiler and not and not by default in in some way. But yeah, it's 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 not exactly clear how we are going to uh, what we are going to end up with in in that point. And 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 with with all the you have to recompile. We we now have the proactive people, the the cold pool people, that actually try to build packages that not yet have to be updated with in the new build environment because it's not only the compiler that changes but also all of the other dependencies that eventually change like glibc which we update yeah okay but uh, let's let's uh, finish and find a place to get dinner <laughs> <laughs>